Hi everyone, so this is the scheduling algorithms program we have made. So basically we have tried to visualize the scheduling algorithms which are there in the operating systems for process scheduling. So let me show you how it is working. Here is our code is compiling. It should come by now. Yeah. So now it is running. Here we have all the different algorithms which are used for process scheduling. So let's see first come first sir. So here you can for first of all let us understand the first come first serve algorithm. In this algorithm, the process which comes first or the one with the earliest arrival time will be processed first by the CPU. After process goes into I.O., it can again come back in the waiting queue to be processed according to their arrival time after I.O. I.O. is basically input and output and this is I.O. burst time which we can add. And this loop will go on till all processes are not completed. So let's first add some processes to this. And uh, in this software, if you don't want to add any of field, you can just leave it. I mean, let's say this is having arrival time zero to and the uh, burst time one. So if we leave the arrival time as it is, it will not be considered. So let's say this is having burst time three and arrival time zero. No IO burst time or burst time after IO. So it, that's one of the functionalities we have added. Okay, and let's add one or two more processes and one more let's add one more to get a round number of 10 <laughs> okay so here is our we have added all the process now we have to press execute button to see the completion time turnaround time and waiting time of these processes and here is the graph according to the process number so this is the turnaround time on the y-axis and process number on the x-axis is now if we want to see what will happen if we remove IO burst time or burst time after IO so we can do that by just clicking these two buttons and execute it again so this is the result after removing IO burst time and burst time after IO and now let's see SJF or shortest job first so here the process is with the shortest processing time is entertained first by the CPU. We consider total CPU burst time or BT1 plus BT2. Here let's fetch data. So this is BT1 plus BT2 in this case 8 and in this case it's 10. BT1 plus BT2 as the basis to schedule the processes and give it to the CPU. For example, if these both processes are arriving at the same time, okay. so let's consider this is having total burst time of 10 and this is having total burst time of 5 so process number 4 will be scheduled first in the cpu instead of process number 2 but here we can see that we have process number 5 which have total burst time of 3 so first process number 5 will be scheduled after then process number 4 and then process number 2 but if there are only these three processes in the table or in the queue but we have all other processes so it will be different in this case so let's execute our code and here you can see the output it will be same in all the algorithm it will almost be same and then let's remove burst time after IO and IO burst time and execute the code so this is the output now so let's get back and let's go to SRTF or shortest remaining time first and fetch the data this is the button we have created so you can fetch the data previously executed data in short and in this SRTF, it is the it is actually the preemptive approach of SJF, which means we can check which algorithm is having the shortest total burst time after every second of the execution, and then CPU executes one with the shortest burst time in the queue. Means in the previous algorithm, what happened was it checks the process with the shortest burst time after execution of a single process. Here it checks at every second. And these steps are repeated until all processes are not completed. It is common in all the algorithms. Still, I feel that I should mention it. So this is the output of SRTF. Again, completion time, turnaround time, waiting time, and here is the graph.
so let's remove burst time and IO burst time and execute so you have noticed that even after removing IO burst time and burst time we execute and again we fetch data then these all appears again so I have set a mechanism that if we remove IO burst time and burst time then this data will not be stored in the memory so it is preserved for other algorithms I mean to implement in other algorithms so I don't have to input in every algorithm and we have other facilities like uh, remove one row we can remove a row one by one and if you want to clear all the table and insert a new data we can clear whole and now insert a new data so let's get back and this is let's go to lgf fetch data again here we have our data so lgf is longest job first it is same as sgf but instead of considering shortest total burst time from the available processes in the queue here we consider the longest total burst time of all available processes means in the previous example I said that this is 3 this have total burst time 5 and these are total burst time 10 so in this case the total burst time will be the same but second number process will be executed first as it has longest total burst time so let's execute this process again here you can see the output in form of graph and completion time total time and waiting time and now we can remove the burst time after IO and IO burst time and execute this and here we have out these all have same functionalities just the algorithm implemented in background is different now let's come to LRTF so LRTF it is actually the preemptive approach of the LGF that is LRTF is actually longest remaining time first which is preemptive approach of LGF it checks the longest job after every second of execution and executes the next longest job in the queue means uh, like in SRTF we check the, the shortest job after execution of every second here we check the longest job it's exactly opposite of that so this process is repeated until all jobs are not executed in this table so here we have our output graph and this is pretty much the same I mean values name but yeah the format is pretty much the same and then let's check remove burst time and execute this so it's like this and then let's go to HRNN or highest response ratio next let's first fetch our data this button comes very handy in this tutorial actually that's the reason why I made this button it yeah so in this algorithm we calculate the response ratio of each process now what is the response ratio response ratio is current time minus arrival time plus total burst time and we divide this whole value by total burst time if possible I will add uh, some snippet or something like here or there so you can understand what I say and the one with the highest response ratio is executed first and after completion we repeat this process I mean after completion of a process we again calculate the response ratio of all the processes available and uh, the one with highest response ratio is uh, executed by the CPU so in this algorithm let's execute it and here we have a graph and our output and again let's remove the burst time and our burst time and execute and here we have again our graph and other output okay so this was it and then let's have round robin algorithm in round robin algorithm let's again fetch our data first so let's understand what it is here we have one extra field other than general input fields of all processes i mean these are the all general input fields that have a time burst time one iobt and bt2 but here we have one extra field named time quantum now the time quantum is very important as here the process is executed which arrives first for x seconds when x is the time quantum suppose we have 3 here so the process which is arrived first is executed for 3 seconds if it is more if it have more than 3 seconds of burst time and if it has less than 3 seconds of burst time then it is executed for the burst time on that so it's that it is arrived executed for 3 seconds and if it is still remaining though I mean the process is still not completed then it is again placed in the waiting queue and after that it is again executed for 3 seconds if it is not completed 
so this process keeps repeating and uh, um, till all processes are not executed so let's have two and you can see the difference in the output total output if we change the time quantum so let's for sake let's keep it four on it's not optimum in two i think we got most optimum response yeah so this here time quantum 2 is good one for these all processes and then let's remove burst time and burst time after io and let's execute so this is the output so this was round robin scheduling then let's have priority non preemptive let's fetch the data first here we can set the priority of all algorithms so what basically is priority priority is once we set the priority of algorithm the cpu prioritizes it suppose here i have set 0 for low priority and numbers greater than 0 for high priority suppose i set here priority 4 this priority let's let it be 7 this again 4 then this 3 2 this again 3 again 2 and 1 1 and let it be 0 okay So here, one with the highest priority is seven, and one lower than it. These two are both on same priority. Then three are both on same priority. Three is lower than four, like that. So basically, what here we have one field added for each process that is our priority field. Okay. So all processes are assigned a particular priority as we did here. And the processes which are arrived in the queue are then executed according to the priority. if two or more processes have same priority like here we have then they are executed according to their arrival time that is one which arrived early is executed first and this is non preemptive so once we check the priority then we execute whole process i mean for bt1 or bt2 and then again we check the priority we don't check priority every second so this is the output and uh, it's pretty much the same <laughs> So let's remove both time and both time after I U both, and let's again check the output. So this is the change in output we get. Obviously, it will be lower as both time after I U and now both time are removed. If we want to see the previous output, we can do do one thing. We can fetch the data again. Priorities are also saved in the data and execute it. So this is it. Now let's get to the priority preemptive. Now this algorithm is basically preemptive mode of priority scheduling. Means it checks priority of all processes available after every second of execution and executes the one with highest priority after it. I mean, I think I don't have to explain this as uh, in SRTF and LRTF. I have pretty much explained how preemptive things work, preemptive algorithms work. So fetch data again. The priority is saved in the memory. And then we execute, remove burst time after IO and burst IO burst time, and let's execute it again. Now I want to show one thing that if we fetch data and let's do some changes, let's make it three, and here make it thirteen, and let's make this arrival time to be zero, and make this thirty-three. I am doing this cause I just want to show one like. we have changed this and executed now if we go back to priority non preemptive and fetch data these all changes are saved as it is and once we execute it is like this means we can change the data in between and these changes are saved no matter we go to which algorithm these changes will be saved and reflected in every algorithm so this was our scheduling algorithms uh what you can say scheduling algorithms visualization now we have put the link in the description it is the github link of this project you can go there and give your valuable inputs like uh, we have we can add your gantt chart here or somewhere or we can expand this window and add gantt chart here and then add animations somewhere or we can have a new window for the animation for how these processes are executed and we can also add other algorithms in this so if you want to contribute to this project you can go to the our github link in the description and contribute to this project 
otherwise this was just a project for uh, our op operating system lab so after evaluation it has no value but if you want to improve this you can go to my github page and improve this project there thank you all for watching and thank you very much